will embrace it. All right. So we are now live streaming on Facebook. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday and the sisters interview. I'm Shaxi and this is my sister, Sir Rifkin. And uh, we interview people from the SCA. <laughs> I got stuck in that loop again. Um, this month, <laughs> we're interviewing who we are? <laughs> you're interesting people in the SCA. This month, we're interviewing uh, barons and baronesses uh, from around on tier that have been uh, particularly um, uh, awesome. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, during uh, the uh, pandemic in steering our kingdom. Uh, so um, welcome, Thane Clovis and Baronessa Kamena. <laughs> Thanks for doing this tonight. And I, uh, I don't know if I said Tara Pomeria or not, but um, You're good. Pomeria, which is Salem-ish area. Yeah. Just to give people an idea. So how did uh, the two of you find the SCA? Do you uh, want to start? No, how about Are you, you sure you want me to start? <laughs> I found the SCA through um, Baroness Emma Von Byrne, who in modern life is the oldest cousin, and I am the second oldest cousin, and then there are 12 more cousins. Um, and so I moved up to the Salem area, and I lived with them for a month, month and a half. And I moved up June 1st, and two weeks later, I was headed down to Medford to visit my family. And she said, you've got to stop. You've got to stop at this event just really fast, see what we do. And it was the long and short of it. And she took me on like a quick 10, 15 minute tour of the event site, introduced me to a ton of people, uh, one of whom was Clovis, who didn't speak a word to me. <laughs> but as I was driving down the freeway, I got a text message and it said, Chris thinks you're cute. So, <laughs> so uh, then I heard, I heard nothing. I went to Ontario Westmore with uh, Roland and Emma. And I, I know that frequently we talk about our SCA moments. I think, I think my first real SCA moment may have been walking through the Ontario West War encampment and watching the banners flutter. That's, yes, I just, there is something utterly magical about walking past <laughs> all of the banners and the flags and just watching them ruffle and snap in the wind. Uh, so I, I went there and then Sport of Kings, he showed back up and we started dating and October rolled around and Emma was like, oh, hey, Tara Pomeria needs an X checker. You work for the Department of Revenue. You can handle money. Why don't you do it? And I was like, oh, come on. And, and His Excellency chimed in as well. And so um, June 1st, I started. And mid-October, I stepped up as the X checker for Tara Pomeria. <laughs> so, and that was my first real expose uh, that was in 2013 so i'm i am the babe in arms here but that was yes <clears throat> but a very well supported i mean you've got yeah. roland and emma in your corner and and all of the people that i mean that's, yeah. that's quite a, a fabulous well, network i will say lindis i well i shouldn't say what lindis threatened with, with me with in public uh, Lindis threatened me, should I break his heart? <laughs> but otherwise, that's been a constant and dear support. So, so yeah, yeah, it was it was a somewhat um, administrative entrance into the SCA, but it kept me around, you know, and, and more active than I might otherwise have been. So it was, it was fun. And I get to go to events. <laughs> his, his is much more romantic. Oh, is it? Oh. Well, I mean, it was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, I started in the SCA, it was uh, 1997. Um, my friend Lindis said, oh yeah, I started doing this, this medieval thing. It, it's really cool, you should come. And at the time I was, I was dating this girl <laughs> and- uh, It was not me. But uh, um, so 
Lindis, my girlfriend, and her twin sister, and I. Uh, I will. Okay. I mean, it was Atia. <laughs> not the who he was dating. He was not dating Atia. Atia tagged along with us <laughs> and to uh, our first SCA event. It was like an Eagles, and uh, it was kind of magical. It, it was this strange where it'd be just beautiful blue skies one minute and then the rains would come and drench everything the next and the sun would come out and everything would dry off and I remember um, they had a blacksmith at the event and it was just this beautiful moment where uh, the sun set and the blacksmith brought out the sword and his assistants and they started hammering on the sword and sparks were flying, belly dancers came out and the drums started playing. And it was just this magical moment. I mean, how could you not look, fall in love with SCA when you, you experience something like that? That sounds like the Mishka era of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not, was it Mishka, Master Mishka? I, you know, I, don't, I don't remember, I mean... Was it the big Russian? It might've been, I, you well, know, when I started in SCA, I was, I was really fringy, uh, hanging out with. Uh, I was the. You told me I wasn't allowed to say that. The McCreevies. <laughs> uh, I think I met the McPhersons my first uh, SCA event. Uh, but you know, even with those guys, I was kind of quiet in the background. Um, early on, Atia really got into service, and same with Lindis. And I joined them for a while, and I kind of had a bad experience. I stopped doing service really until uh, Roland and Emma stepped up as Baron and Baroness. So I okay, want to doing I, service I was in a say. big way. Yeah, you know, he's always in the background. When I say I did service, <laughs> you know, I took some of our farm equipment out to an event site, uh, helped mow down a field, equipment broke down. You know, it's okay, sweetheart. Nobody was, okay. seemed to even. It's a long time ago. Appreciate it that much, so I stopped. So I mean, <laughs> no, but it's uh, it has been frequently commented. Lindis will frequently in reintroduce him to people and be like, "You remember that event where that thing happened, and there was that guy who showed up and helped you put the tent down or put the tent up? That was him." So uh. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is. Uh, he is the quieter of the two. <laughs> it's true so i i do i want to take a poll of like all the people in terra primaria and find out which ones lindis brought in it's got to be a huge number <laughs> potentially yeah yeah, potentially. yeah did she bring in emma and roland no 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 she no. met them at, yeah she... i don't know no. that would be an interesting poll to take it's roland like five and... five degrees of separation through lindis Right, right. Roland and Emma actually started the SCA just a little bit before. before. That. Okay, okay, yes, yes. Anyway, yeah, we will digress. Pull us back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my next question is usually, how did the two of you meet? But you sort of covered that, unless uh, His Excellency would like to tell well, his side of the story. My experience is a little bit different. <laughs> I had just gone through a very bad breakup. Well, like within six months. And I had, I was taking care of my newborn daughter. Well, she was about- She was about a year old. I think when I met you- The first time. About a year, but I was finally free. And so I may have like uh, had a little bit too much to drink. So, you know, having conversations at that point was probably not a, a good move on my part, but I did let um, Emma know, uh, like, so who was that? Who did you bring with you? <laughs> yes, and when he asked Roland what I was like, what did what did Roland say? Roland said uh, she's like, like Emma, but louder. But louder, yeah, yeah. It's a trend in our family. <laughs> and you said, sign me up. <laughs> oh, <right? yeah. laughs> He has a thing for loud women. I don't know. I do. I do have a type. It's uh, loud, charismatic, very intelligent. <laughs> but yeah, so Sport of Kings, actually, he 
he planned it all out. He he found out what events I was going to, and he brought he brought our daughter Paulina with him to make sure that yeah you know, I didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> you know she's gonna scare away. I want to make sure she scared away early. So I brought my my ex's oldest daughter, who is not my child, but you know I kind of consider mine and my daughter. So you know if she's gonna scare away, I wanted to do it. Go big or go home. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, um, did you decide to take on the role of Baron and Baroness before the pandemic, or was it during the pandemic? Oh, it was. Yeah, it was before. Yeah. Well, yeah, we stepped up uh, the April the April prior. So the the Bargamels that we had to cancel for uh, in April 2020 would have been our first year marker. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you got a little normalcy under your belts as Baron and Baroness. <laughs> yes. And they say at least that first year is kind of the, uh, where you, you, you find your footing and you figure out, you know, what the job is really about. You know, just as soon as it's like, okay, I got this, you know, I, this next year is going to be awesome. We're going to do our sergeantry trials and everything. Oh, no. <laughs> Never mind. We're going to have a pandemic. Yeah. So how did your um, goals change for the role um, when the pandemic hit? You know, <laughs> you know, um, I'd say early on, um, I, I, I had an idea that we, we needed to be doing virtual classes even back March. Um, In part because we had been preparing to start our our sergeantry trials, and there, the we had we had revamped the requirements and and how to how to meet those requirements, and a lot of it was attend a meeting, take a class, and so rather than just abruptly cutting all that off, uh, His Excellency started arranging. Well, I I wanted to try it with. ANS specifically and mm. bring the our ANS minister along but uh, uh, she wasn't really in a great place to be handling that so <laughs> she does live up a canyon she does uh, and, <laughs> and uh, so I I kind of took it on under the guise of you know doing sergeantry classes doing things that uh, uh, we hoped our sergeants would would learn uh, as they became sergeants, important things for keeping our society running, like how to run gate, uh, how to run, how to be on retinue, uh, even how to run an event, even whether or not they're going to run an event. I think that's an important skill to understand, you know, the inner workings of how to plan. An event. And yeah. things kind of, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say just to have that perspective of how much work it, it is to, to put on an event and, um, you know, when you show up and you just play, having the perspective of what these mm -hmm. people are doing to make your play possible is really important. It is. Absolutely. And a lot of people won't get that background look at what's going on because their, their interest lies in a different area other than the administrative realm. And it, I feel like it's very important that there is that awareness of all of the work that has to happen in order for us to have our SCA moments. There has to be a ton of work that's gone into preparing and maintaining this society as an entity. So we're able to have the structure that we follow and the reach that we have. So yeah, that, and that is, that is where he started. And then he started, started watching like your show and things like, started branching out. And he was like, Oh, Oh, yeah, this yeah, person, yeah. we really need to, Hey, by the way, this person did this interview and mentioned in this interview that they do this thing. And I know you're really interested. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially like your interview with uh, Duchess Kiva. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, Oh yeah. She's so passionate. I've got to get her to teach a class. So. I'll, I, I'll frequently come home and have him be like, guess who I got lined up to teach a class. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Bless you. <laughs> <clears throat> 
That's great. And you've had really good response to, to people wanting to do that with you. Yeah, it's oh, been yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been really surprising. I mean, I think uh, you never know until you ask. So I've asked people that you know, I thought, oh, for sure, they're, you know, they're not, this will be beneath them. You know, they won't want to do it. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll teach a class. Thank you for asking me to teach a class. Yeah. Like, oh, no, thank you for teaching. I, I think that's so important that um, people learn that, that you, the answer is always no until you ask. And most people love to be asked. And, you know, and if they say no, well, then you're in the same position you were before you asked them. So absolutely. He's much better at that than I am. Can I backtrack for just a second? What what was your like original sort of impetus to um to do the Baron and Baroness job? Um well this is I actually Lindis and I uh, put our names forward in and I wanna say like twenty nine, two thousand nine. No, 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 no. It would have been uh 2012 oh was it same year paulina was born oh okay. or no <laughs> it yes. was before no it was 20 2011 that and then sense. i am really glad that we weren't chosen i think we pulled <laughs> really well i mean linda's is awesome but uh uh they went with uh peter and ainsley peter and ainsley and I'm really glad that they chose them because, ooh, my life got really messy really quick. So they, they made the right decision. Uh, but uh, I, I really like the idea of, you know, being in a position to inspire people to be better or to uh, learn new things or, you know, excel in the SCA. And then, you know, this is perfect position. He likes to arrange things. Don't, don't let him, don't let him kid you. <laughs> That's our definite division of, of, uh, of power. He, I, I have frequently commented that I, I provide the distraction so he can go in and ask the people what they, you know, ask people to do things and yeah. And so, you know, I'm loud and outgoing and talk with my hands a lot and he's just like oh, i'm gonna sneak around here and rescue this kitchen and oh, yeah. <laughs> linda says 2011 yes because <laughs> you know uh -oh. she's watching <laughs> i know i was gonna say well that knocks out half of uh -oh. our stories right there so um, your service gate then is sort of facilitating, um, I'm talking to His Excellency, uh, facilitating other people's success and education? So uh, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. And when I have run kitchens, I, I made it a point to reach out and ask people that normally wouldn't be uh, considered for the kitchen and I had asked them well why don't you take care of this one meal you know bargain mills is an event where uh you have all weekend long a kitchen being run and you get your food from the kitchen usually in the summer and so you're being fed all week long and it can be a big task for one person to come up with a meal plan for everybody but it's not so big to figure out and you know if you can provide support around it i mean it, it's a wonderful experience so so yes i i like to facilitate other people <laughs> and um shamina what is your um kind of service geek i guess i'm kind of a point and shoot i'm mm, so X checking I could do because I have I have an, a background in doing similar things, but generally I'm really good at short spurts of activity. I'm not always the best at maintaining <laughs> maintaining focus for longer than ten minutes. Um, 
but but you know I, I guess the family my family when I grew up we would always be the last people to leave the wedding or you know the party or the funeral because we would be the ones helping put away the chairs and vacuum the floors you know carry things out to cars and so I frequently and happily will wind up doing stuff like that where it's like oh you need this done I can help you with this uh, a, a slight quirk to that is for some reason, uh, I am obsessed with pre-reg gate sheets and how now since we're, I know, I see you laughing at me. I get it. <laughs> I think it's because, so the data comes in through the Google forms or the, so it comes in now and it goes into a data, like a database spreadsheet. And then you can code the Excel and pull all of the information out and put it cleanly into a gate sheet. I, I just, I cannot tell you how many, <laughs> how many hours I have spent going, oh, I can, it's just within my grasp. I, I so, love that someone's excited about that. That's awesome. <laughs> well, and I know it is insane. Like I recognize that it is not a normal thing to be excited about. But I think I think what it is is that I love um, I love efficiency. So I I guess we're we're kind of he likes things to run well. I like things to run well. He delegates. I just freak out and hyper focus on an aspect that I'm able to control. And so <laughs> I actually yeah. agree that like, I think the Google Docs suite is something that um, we could use so much more um, effectively in on tier. Um, yeah. It would, it would be just be such a great way to collaborate better. Um, so I, I think somebody who's super excited about it and understands it way better than I do, um, if they could get some other people excited about it, um, and have it spread like you know chicken pox or something <laughs> I don't right, know. right well and i've worked with uh within our barony um lady gwyneth blackthorn is incredible with running pre-reg and she's allowed me to collaborate multiple times to to create her her actual gate sheets so um uh, the embarrassing part of this is i'm not usually inspired to obsess over it until like two weeks before the event. And then I jam it all <laughs> into that time period. Um, <clears throat> but this last time you brought up the Google, the Google suite, um, I figured out that a lot of the programming I do to break out information is also available within Google Docs or within Google Sheets. So yeah, yeah. She and I had talked about putting together a general format to be able to hand to somebody and say, here, here's how to set up your, uh, your form to get the information that you need to then pull correctly into the sheet. And I am so sorry. I, am so sorry. <laughs> I can't control it anyway. Okay. You know, I, I think this is a great time because uh, right now people are a lot more appreciative of the people who are good with the technology right now versus, <laughs> you know, two years ago, everybody's like, oh yeah, good. I'm glad that you're doing that tech thing. Right. I'm going to do this medieval. Thing it doesn't, here. doesn't impact me at all. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I deal with that technology. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also, um, I've talked to, um, Baron Felix about this a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to see us use the Google suite to do a database of peers, you know, something that's accessible to everybody so that you've got all the laurels with their pictures and all of their interests and who their students are and, uh, contact information and what they're willing to teach. Um, same with the Pelicans and maybe Knights. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's doable. We could get organized. Yeah, that's totally doable. And okay. after the events, um, you know, I think that would be really cool. We don't have anything on our website that does that. And uh, I think it needs to be something that is easily accessible. Um, yeah, that's a, a technological conversation that I could easily dive too deep into and lose you half of your audience just like that. So <laughs> <laughs> nobody's watching. Nobody's now, nah, you know. I, I, I do like medieval things. It's not just yeah, that is not my only consuming passion <laughs> within the SDA. <laughs> that's just the one we're coming up on our September coronet. So I I've been recently tweaking my sheets and so it is, it is something I actually am proud of. I, uh, it, it's, 
<sighs> it thrills my little efficiency happy soul to walk up to the gate and for pre-reg have this lovely pre-printed sheet and go, <laughs> you just have to find your name by your last name. It's right there again, right there. <laughs> awesome. <sighs> yeah, sorry. On to, oh, look at the weather. <laughs> look at the time. <laughs> so, um, how have you been running your classes? How have they, how are they structured and what technology are you using? Uh, so, unfortunately, it's mostly advertised on Facebook, and uh, I both love and detest Facebook, but it is a very efficient way to uh, recruit an audience and let people know what is going on. Um, the, the classes are run solely on Zoom. They're not streamed uh, any other way. Uh, we record the classes. I edit the classes very well. He edits them amazingly well. So yeah, I I uh, <laughs> I want to make sure that uh, it shows the the best us when I, I publish it. Um, and a lot of times I'll go in and I'll edit out ands and ums and his uh, wife and, and uh, <laughs> even you know the the silent period when somebody says, "Are there any questions?" and everyone's like, "Uh." Right. <laughs> so I'll edit that out. So it, it, it's a, a lot shorter class and a lot smoother and a lot easier to watch on mm -hmm. a platform like Zoom or yeah. like a, a sorry, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. And I do also publish it on our Baronial Library. Which is that is a huge amount of work to edit. Um, I, I did a, one of those dance videos in the beginning. <laughs> Take me forever. <laughs> it so is, I would say that for every hour of class that I edit, I probably spend at least four editing. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, he's kind of amazing. He really <laughs> is. It's uh yeah. yeah. He it is and he does he does a really good job. He's actually gotten to the point now where he can identify ums just by the, the wave pattern yeah, in the, in the, like, <laughs> the program I use shows the uh, vocal pattern. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, that's enough. And I'll like skip ahead, so. That's awesome. We, uh, we considered um, editing and at part of why we went to just doing live streaming is because we didn't want to do that much work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the time for it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's He's, he's, he's done some amazing things with classes where something's gone wrong, you know, and we only have the voice or we only have good visuals. Uh, we had one class where we lost the first half of the class and he actually, we sat down with the teacher and she retaught the first half of the class with us as her audience. Wow. And then he, he pasted the two parts together. Um, yeah, yeah, just. I, yeah, I, I have amazing. Yeah. and we're one of the most exciting things for us is the accessibility of these classes to people that would otherwise not be able to attend for for a million different reasons oh yeah and uh yeah so we've had we've had several people who ever attended a single sca event yeah. attend one of these classes yeah so, I, i'm really looking forward when we are actually able to do in person i mean how many people will say that they found the SCA during the pandemic. <laughs> so you said something about saving your classes to the Baronial Library. Where is that and how do people access it? On Facebook, it is... Uh, Barony of Terra Pomeria uh, Library? Official library. Official library, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the easiest way to find the the trove of classes like specifically the videos would be the baronial youtube channel which is yeah. barony of terra pomeria the baronial library mistress suvia is our librarian and so she she also puts in um yeah. relevant relevant links she's really great with research and so yeah that's that's where that part comes in if you're proficient at being able to navigate uh, Facebook, you can find the classes, but you'll have an easier time if you go to the the YouTube page. Yeah, I think I think we're working to get a link if if there's not one already. Um, 
on, on our, the page. Our, our web mistress is pretty amazing too. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, I've also had people, uh, several people in different interviews talk about, um, <laughs> Griffin has, has allergies so bad. <laughs> she, I understand. I <laughs> That grass field behind us from May to July is oh. my death. So yes. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, people in your interviews have said uh, talked about um, how focused on um, equity, inclusion, mm -hmm. diversity uh, the barony is, and and a lot of your classes have been geared toward that. Oh yeah. That was actually one of our, when we first stepped up before the world started burning down around us all, that was one of our primary pushes. Um, Especially with sergeantry. Yeah, sergeantry. And well, cause we live, so where we live to the West of us, 20 minutes is a city that is made up, the demographics are something like, what is it 70, 80% Hispanic, um a large percentage of russian orthodox and and then you know people look like me and um that demographic is in no way reflected in our barony as much as as much as we are we do treasure very much the fact that our barony values equity and inclusion and diversity to the ex you know, the, the very great extent that it does the fact is we as a group do not reflect the demographics of the people around us. And, you know, we're talking about people who have, some have very different histories that are that are more American centered. Um, we're very excited that we are now, one of our classes was on uh, indigenous personas. Well, actually two have been on indigenous personas now. One was a, a local persona and one was um, based, based in, I think, Tenochtitlan, so down in like the Mexico City, Nahuatl, um, Nahuatl persona. Um, anyway, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, but a lot of these people also have histories in Russia. They have histories in Spain. They have histories in, you know, Italy. And they don't have the same opportunity that we have to explore not only our own backgrounds. I, I am clearly not Spanish you know <laughs> that is but that but they don't have the opportunity to either explore their own backgrounds or feel the freedom to explore other other portions of history and other areas in the same way that we do sorry i this is another thing i get excited about <laughs> <laughs> well that's exciting <laughs> it is but, but yeah, so so that was that was something uh, it, it's been difficult to pull off um we had really hoped to hold some events in in woodburn which is the the town we're talking about but um his excellency his his footwork when he's looking for event sites he'll be like oh we should take a nice drive and go to this park i've heard it's a lovely park and we'll pull up and i'm like this is the size of an event park is it <laughs> But but uh, but getting an event site where we could where we could hold an event. <sighs> Once the pandemic hit, a lot of that kind of fell by the wayside because it has yeah. kind of become very much a survival mode in some ways. Yeah. Um, and it's <sighs> I think we both greatly value the opportunity for inclusion and um, outreach that things like the Zoom classes have given us. But within our own barony, it, it really is trying to keep trying to keep everybody alive. Uh, or, or that's a bad. We've had we've had a rough year in our barony. <laughs> you know, trying to keep everyone engaged and a community to pull us all through this. Yeah. So, yeah. As I'm sure you've heard from other people. <laughs> Absolutely, because I do the same thing to my husband that um, Clovis does to you. I take him to parks in a lake. <laughs> it, really, it really is the funniest thing. <laughs> we'll be we'll be driving along, and all he'll be driving, he'll be driving, and all of a sudden, I'm like, "Do we need to turn around?" No, 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 no. <laughs> Can you use the map to see who owns that? 
<laughs> oh, yeah. I would be like, yeah. we didn't come here to walk the dog, did we? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, nah. I work for the state of Oregon, and he has shamelessly used me to gain access to parks and rec, and you know, and park rangers. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Shaxi, what were you saying? I don't know. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. No, I think I was going to talk about um, being able to, you, you really can't replace being able to go into a community in a park that is 80% um, Chicano and, and being able to be in, within that community and do that sort of uh, physical outreach. Um, it, it's just, you can't replace that on the internet. Um, yeah, no. oh. especially since, I mean, the poll with the live event is first you get the people coming up and looking at you like, what are you people insane? What are you doing here? And, and then instead of them just, you know, be, being like, oh, it's just a bunch of weirdos, you can step forward and say, hey, here's what we're doing. And I know you might think that this isn't something that's for you, but let me explain to you how it is. <laughs> and, and yeah, that has, <sighs> yes, hindered that aspect of what we, what we had hoped to accomplish during our tenure. That's what I was trying to get at. Poor <laughs> Misty. <laughs> but you know, if our legacy is we did a bunch of great classes, I, I think oh, yeah. I'm, I'm satisfied with that leg legacy. I, mine would be we didn't burn the barony down. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of yeah. <laughs> that's a low bar. <laughs> In a pandemic, it's actually you kind think of. That. Low bar. You think that. <laughs> uh, sometimes a low bar is what you need. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then now that I'm thinking about it, actually not having the barony literally burned down completely because yeah. Look, it was only part of the barony. It was only part. Ever. <laughs> only a little bit. And we didn't start the fire. We didn't. Thank goodness. <laughs> so you've had that. You've had the big freeze. You've had the pandemic. Yeah. Um, yeah. The heat. We had the heat. Eat. How, how have you uh, reached out to, in addition to the Zoom uh, classes, what else are you guys doing as Baron and Baroness to kind of keep your community going? Uh, we've done a, a few uh, beer, beer, virtual courts. Uh, for Excellency ran a virtual event back in April, a virtual bargain house. I nearly gave him a heart attack. I had three weeks to the date. I was like, I'm going to throw an event. It was very much like our, our, our wedding planning. Hey, where, where we got married, didn't we? <laughs> yes. I, I would say, OK, we have uh, two months until our wedding. Uh, this needs to be accomplished by this weekend, or I'm, I'm postponing the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> He was overly concerned that we were a month out and I didn't have a dress. I don't know what his problem was. Um, yeah, we have had virtual virtual court. We have virtual um, monthly, weekly, weekly, monthly, monthly, monthly meetings. Um, both our our social Kaylee gathering and our scribal. Um, we try to reach out when it's. Uh, I will be very frank with you. As many people have experienced, my mental health has definitely taken a couple of hits. Yes. I wish that I reached out more to my barony. I do wish that I, I was on top of things enough to be like texting a different person every day to check in. Um, in my head, that's what I want to be the reality is that i i don't i don't have that i work 40 hours a week i have a husband we have a nine-year-old things are happening in the world but I, but when we remember yeah i do text members of the yes. barony to check them out, but not not as much as they need and not as much as i'd like yeah it's it's difficult because you know we talked about setting a low bar and the, the fact is honestly that we set a pretty high bar for ourselves. And so when we don't 
when we don't reach that, it is um, disheartening. Um, but we do we do try to check in on people when we when we recognize that they're particularly um, vulnerable to to you know the slings of an arrows of outrageous fortune. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, we we try to show up. <laughs> I would tell you. <laughs> There are many times I feel like I've failed as a parent. Usually that's when I don't reach out when I'm, when I know people are struggling and usually because I'm struggling as well. Yeah. And when I express my opinion, when I should, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that, um, I think we're all struggling a little bit. Yeah. You know? And you can't, uh, support another person and fill another person's cup until yours is filled and, and well supported. And um, I think that, that uh, that's a lesson I've had to learn during this as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, I th it also gives me space to remember that just like I feel like someone has punched a hole in the bottom of my bucket sometimes, I really need to practice more grace when when I should be recognizing that someone else is feeling the same way. And uh, I've gotten better. <laughs> I, th I think what, something else that also makes it really hard is that I know a lot of us don't like to burden our friends because we know that other people are going through the same thing. So it's hard to tell when somebody actually needs to be reached out to Yeah, um, a lot. I mean, I, I, I struggle with that just with my friendships like you know it's like mm -hmm. well has that person been quiet or you know is the Facebook algorithm just fucking with me <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> hold on a second I'm gonna go ahead and go on in kiddo sorry the child just got back from grandma's <laughs> Hi, child <laughs> <laughs> Clovis is going to go oh Clovis is going to light our torch if it's too loud just tell us okay um, <laughs> can I ask you what what is the thing behind you is that like a shelter or a table or what is that that is the coolest thing so one day I asked his excellency if we could clean the house and he said sure and then later that afternoon I walked out and he had started building a gazebo from fallen timber on our property <laughs> and he was like I thought you would really like this gazebo and I do, I do really like my gazebo. <laughs> but he, he has flowers. I don't know if you can still see them. There's there are flowers planted in a in a bed that runs all the way around the outside of the of the gazebo. And on um, top. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. super cool. It kind of looks like the pit house on Drifa's property. It's it's a lot of fun. His excellency takes a great amount of joy in um, Finding a project like that and and I, it, I he's he's carved he carved a staff for our head of retinue, a very elaborate and uh, complicated staff with little vignettes all over it. Um, he recently he recently in in the over the course of a day was like I'm gonna make fabric stamps for this person and <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a good. I mean we have a lot of wood on the property so. It's true, especially after that ice storm. Oh, yeah, yeah. It reminds me, I still need to use that lichen. We, we collected a lot of downed lichen and uh, we're totally gonna dye things with it. Totally, it's gonna, it's gonna happen, happen. it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> like most Skadians, we collect, we collect a ridiculous number of hobbies. That's true. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about right right uh, yeah I I got into uh my my work slowed down dramatically uh for several months during the shutdown I was like the only person in the office most of the time and I didn't have enough work to keep me busy and so I was like I am going to sew nightgowns so now I have a much better idea of rectangular construction and how that works <laughs> yeah so it's, it's fun. We, we like, we like, I think that may be one of our many favorite things about the SCA is the opportunity to learn the craziest things and, and just 
if you're interested in something, we can find a, a medieval analog. It's always very exciting. Very cool. So, so Clovis, tell me more about your carving. What's, what's, uh, what is your? Uh, <laughs> I, you know, it's just one of those things that I do. I mean, and not uh, all the it's time. something that I, I enjoy. It, so I was kind of blessed with having this grandmother who, she was the type of person who would, she'd just pick a project, random project, and she would master it. And then she would put it away and never touch it. And she'd move on to her next project. She would master it and then put it down, never touch it. And she'd do this over and over again. And so I, I love exploring projects. I'm not sure that I explore it to the point of mastery, but you know, I, I do love taking it on and you know, challenging myself and and uh, you know, carving is you know one of those things. It, it's fun. It builds the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as we had a friend over was it last weekend or the weekend? Done before. But um, her excellency and her were were experimenting dyeing fabric, and oh. perhaps it didn't go as lessons well. were learned. Lessons but, were learned. But uh, while they were working on that, uh, I carved two, well, I carved two stamps that were uh, images on this person who was visiting us, her heraldry. So, you know, like, okay, I did this thing. You can have it, take it with you. I mean, she forgot it here, but uh, I, I think she was appreciative. <laughs> That's just because she wants to come back. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we still have to try to dye the linen correctly this time. I didn't read the label. I know better. I know better. I know that there are different dyes. I understand fiber. It's very embarrassing. To everyone watching who knows that I should know better, you're right. You're it right. happens. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it was very shaming. <laughs> oh. So sorry, my Oh, sorry. Yes, go so ahead. Your class is still still ongoing. So, uh, <laughs> very interesting. Um, Funny you should say that. It, when did when was our last one? Was it, uh, it was July? Bambi. Yeah. Yeah. So in July we stopped stopped doing the classes, and starting on the twenty sixth, we're restarting our class series. Uh, the first one is going to be with former barons and baronesses on basically what the, uh, we'll have a round table discussion on what the job of Baron and Baroness actually is. And we'll have, who did I invite? Finn Grimm. Um, I, some <laughs> amazing Barons and Baronesses. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't remember. His Majesty Vic. Uh, no, not Majesty. Yes. yes. Oh, yes, Majesty. His Majesty. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Duchess Diarna <laughs> um, uh, from Aquaterra. Uh, You're putting me on the spot and I can remember nothing. A, <laughs> a, 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 I can't say Ang Harid? Yes. <laughs> He's put together a wonderful panel of people. And if I'm forgetting somebody else, I am feeling really bad. But, <laughs> But it, it's going to be awesome. I think that's going to be a, a great panel. Oh, uh, His Excellency uh, Ambrose is also yes. cool. Yeah, and then after that, he has we have a two day or yeah, a two day coder D class, basic coder D class, um, and then I think it might be the stamp. This, oh yes, fabric stamping. With uh, <laughs> Morgan. Yes, he, he just, he loves going out and finding things that he knows that people are interested in. It, it is a lot of fun. Um, uh, recently, I even had a conversation with, uh, with getting a, what is odd class? Because, you know, it's kind of one of those things. They're, they're an easy target for people uh, playing at a local level. Like we can't do anything because those 
people the at the bond level. So, you know, I think, uh, I mean, you you guys have interviewed uh, John the Bear Killer. So, I mean, it's, it's nice having these people more accessible. I, I would love it if somebody would uh, interview the um, Ontario Ombudsman. Yeah. I, I don't want to interview him. I don't. I don't want to give that away to anyone else. <laughs> well, we won't take the interview. We'll just have him teach a class. I mean, yeah, totally different. Talk to him. Have him tell you like what what he does and uh, what kind of things you bring to him. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Would be a useful thing to know. It's uh one of the one of the things that we've really enjoyed with the classes. Um, is getting to explore the recent development of the expansion of what the SCA time period is. So we've gotten to, uh, we've, we've really enjoyed the opportunity to look at so many different places around the world. We had a North African wrap dress class where our teacher was talking about the connections between uh, Scandinavia and Rome and Greece and then modern Moroccan dress and you know the flow through and we really appreciate the fact that our world has expanded so much i i know that in some ways it's very it can be very difficult for us to give up the um the arthurian dream that we kind of like we grew up a lot of us again people that look like me <laughs> we kind of grew up with this arthurian legend as this beautiful shining mystical thing that we had and and the SCA has been that for many people for a very long time and so I I really understand and appreciate that it's difficult to let that let that go as a as a paragon of perfection but but the opportunity for us to provide the same uh experience for geekery and obsession to other people based on different cultures and time periods is, ah, oh, it's been a lot of fun. I, I think now he deliberately looks for those those classes just just to watch me oh, go. Yeah. Oh! I, I I totally totally tried to get uh, Sir Roland to do a class. Oh yeah, on his uh, uh, Filipino uh, roots that he's yep. been exploring. I yeah. Think he, I don't think he's quite ready for that, but you know, I'll that's keep a big step. <laughs> yeah, well, he's just he's just started, right? It's it's yeah. only a few months into um, what he's doing, and he's already doing such amazing work. I'm so excited to see him um, doing that research, um, and and I too, I'm so excited about um, kind of the decolonization of the SCA and and getting people to look at all of the incredible cultures that that have con contributed to um, you know some willing not some not so willingly <laughs> well hey i mean if our original goal was to experience our Arthurian dream i mean we totally departed from that when we allowed it italian rent so i mean true so true <laughs> I was reading an article, I found it absolutely fascinating. It was talking about how the dark ages in, in Europe uh, were in absolutely no way the dark ages elsewhere and uh, how in, was it China? China in India, it was actually their kind of a Renaissance period. So uh, yeah, recognizing that the center of power in the world has shifted over and over again from different areas. Yeah, we're also history geeks. So <laughs> we find the interplay of history and and geography and it's all just fascinating very exciting yeah, it's <laughs> um so in addition to more classes coming up um what are your next steps you have you have coronet coming up yeah oh, yeah. yeah we have coronet um so it's, it's tricky. It's tricky to plan events. We, we kind of tentatively start to plan events. Um, so far, the, uh, the odds have not been in our favor uh, as far as the opportunity to throw in-person events again. Um, so we'll see, we have one that's, we have a bid on the table. 
Um, if that doesn't work, we'll probably look at having at least another another virtual event. Um, we we need to get back on our sergeantry program. <laughs> it is difficult for me where November is my busy period where I disappear for about a month. So do you want to tell them why? Well, mundanely, I'm a Christmas tree farmer. So okay. November, yeah. I do not exist. He does not. There's a grouchy gremlin <laughs> that is in his place. <laughs> Only to her. Only to her. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, we we do need to. Uh, yes, Zuleika, I hear you yelling at me. We we need to get our sergeant tree program kind of back back on the rails. Um, we would like to have the opportunity to to put on our sergeantry trials. Um, we haven't discussed turning it into a purely virtual uh, in experience because we do feel like there is an awful lot of stuff that really does require in-person. Um, but there are some great opportunities to do things that um, might not otherwise be available. Uh, other, than, other than, we would like to keep our barony from burning to the ground. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and build community. I, I, I don't know, at the, at the end of the day right now, that's kind of where we are, keeping, um, keeping people afloat. Yeah, yeah, because um, we're starting to lose people and uh, it's, it's hard. Um, and yeah. the, the position that um, you are in as Baron and Baroness of having to sort of set the tone and the rules and trying to track all of the modern restrictions and the COVID numbers and juggle all of that and try to figure, parse it out and figure out what is and isn't safe. It's a huge burden. So, you know, we're losing people to things like COVID and death, and, but, uh, the few opportunities that we have had to have person events like over the last months, I've been amazed to see how many old players want to come back and play and how many new players that we're bringing. So I have some high hopes for the future. Yeah, uh, and I know <clears throat> this social upheaval that's been happening everywhere, we are a microcosm of, of the modern world. Um, and I know that that has had a very strong impact. By the way, it has not been windy like this any other night until tonight. <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> it's actually sort of magical because your faces are sort of lit and then they're not lit. And yeah, he I, plans I like, well. I like the <laughs> oh, and I lost my train of thought. Yep, where was I? People? Microcosm. Microcosm, yes. So um, <laughs> I... I it's been very difficult for us too. There's been a lot yeah. of really hard conversations that have happened. Um, and, and I know that there are some people who feel that the SCA is no longer the place for them. It's our hope that what we are doing is crafting an SCA that is a place for everybody. And for, you know, yes. So you can walk in and be like, I would like to study Central African. I want to have a Central African persona. This is, you know, this is the research. Here is what I have found. Let's go. Uh, and hmm, yes. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, there have been times I've I felt this heart just listening to some people who, you know, are so resistant to letting people in who are different than them or. Uh, are sad to see things like DEI uh, as a part of the SCA, but I mean, what does it hurt to uh, include people and to make people feel welcome? I mean, it, uh, if we lose those people who are that resistant to change, then I think we're a better society if they if they uh, aren't willing to uh, welcome new people in. Yeah, because. Sorry. No, go ahead. I was just uh, agreeing with you 100%. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just going to say that um, you have to embrace um, what 
you're gaining and yes. not, you know, and it's not really like you're losing anything, you're evolving, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, and it's kind of like um, the concept of um, like in dysfunctional family relationships, you know, you have the concept that love is a finite resource, right? And so if I love this child more, it means that I can't love, like I have to love this child less. Um, it sometimes feels like people, <sighs> people sometimes feel like, well, if all of these people enjoy, then that's going to read, you know, if more people come in and get to have this same experience that I'm having, it's going to lessen my ability to have joy in my experience. And again, hearkening back to what I was talking, I get that many of us have or have had this idea of, of a very specific image of the SCA or, you know, of the SCA and, and medieval, the medieval period that we are um, recreating is not really the correct word that we are enacting. Exploring. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, but it's, yeah. it's the dream that so few of us can actually share you know so so few of us actually have that background or that experience i i want other people to have the opportunity to feel the same way that i do and somebody else's research into you know africa or asia or scythian does not or the americas lessen my research <laughs> into saxon so i mean in fact, uh, it should complement. You can say, well, you know, I found this technique for, you know, figuring out how these things went together. I mean, it should apply to how you research yours. Mm -hmm. And you'll see us also get very excited. Uh, oftentimes it is amateur academics that, that can do like some serious headway into some of these lesser, lesser investigated um, cultures and areas and so the opportunity that we have to contribute to to the the understanding of these places yes again on the topics that will get us super <laughs> <laughs> spread spread I, sheets I don't know and if diversity you know this, but yes we are no divergent and uh... <laughs> remember I, the, I was going to say it. I think the common denominator for for success really is passion, and yeah. and why wouldn't you want to embrace, um, you know, divergent passions to make to enrich the group um, fully? Yeah. Well, and and to see other people, to see other people get that excited about something like that's I love that. I love that. And His Excellency clearly, you know, you know, with with having how he runs his kitchens, how he's been running these classes. We love to see people get so excited that they're just, you know, they're doing they just can't they can't control themselves because they they are so overjoyed with what they're having the opportunity to learn themselves and then share with other people. And yes, again, I want everyone to feel like this is an option that they have, regardless of where they're from. Dang it, we can all have fun together. And it's our job as 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 royalty and as peers to make sure that uh, there is a space here for them to succeed. And there's, you know, we have to figure out, for example, in the Laurel community, how do we uh, embrace indigenous culture research and how do we embrace pre-colonialism and 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 the uh, research into that um, because it, it's not the the it's traditional it. Western way of research. Yeah. It's not going to be the same, and so we need to figure that out. And we need to we need to make sure that that uh, path is free of weeds for people to progress down it. Absolutely, and it, it is it is a difficult path to tread because you're moving into you're moving into cultures where the stuff being studied exists in a in a very similar fashion today that's one of the things that we've discussed the whole the whole um appreciation versus versus appropriation um it can be it can be a really tricky line to walk and along a, a lot of these topics we we kind of agree like there are going to be missteps we're going to make mistakes 
we're going to say the wrong thing, we're going to go the wrong way. But if our main goal is to, to, to help as many people as we can, we'll, we'll wind up in the right place. Yeah. Again, having the ability to give grace, you know, and hope for it in return. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. I remember hearing uh, Shoxi talk about uh, uh, your early research in Scythian, and you look back on it, and it is, it is not close to the knowledge that you know now. So, I mean, perhaps we can allow a little grace in that learning curve for them as well. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a, there's a trailblazer aspect to it that, um, you know, you don't have the, uh, all of the research that has gone before you with, with Anglo-Saxon and, and Viking Age stuff and um, Tudor and Elizabethan and 14th century. Um, there's so much work that's been done and there's so much to build on. And um, with, you know, for example, the research that Roland's doing, he's starting from fresh. He, he is, he is creating those building blocks for other people to build on. And that's super exciting. It is. And the cultures you were, you were talking about, they all have a continuous um, a continuous line where the people who came after them were like, oh, we must retain this for history. And so many of these other, like the Scythians, they were just, they were done. They were gone. There weren't people being like, oh, here, we're going to put this in a museum and write the history of, you know, and, and in, the, in the case of like the Tagalog or the Nahuatl people, um, the, the Americas in general, these cultures were cut there's there's no content there's i mean there is continuity but not in the same way they were you know through the colonial period there's a giant chunk missing so, so you look at I, even uh even within the last 20 years when you talk about you know the saxon research uh, the the sutton um sutton who the sutton who helmet you know what we know when we look we look at images on the internet that's not how they viewed what that helmet looked like 20 years ago or 30 years yeah. or 50 years ago. I mean, it is, it is evolved and they rebuilt that helmet so many times until it looks like what it is now. I mean, yeah, it's ever evolved. And there is, if you are interested in the, um, in the, I think it's primarily uh, Mexico centric persona development. There's a, Barony is it an entire there's there's a group back east that's been doing some really excellent work into into those into those very questions last weekend they just had a uh, unknown world symposium what yeah you didn't you tell me you should have told me oh my goodness <laughs> you're, fired. you're fired yeah I attended some really great work <laughs> We will be having a discussion later. <laughs> we, oh, I is because we were cleaning the danged garage. You, we were cleaning the garage. And he didn't want, he didn't want to distract me. He really wanted to. How, and you, oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Take a deep breath. Compose. <laughs> uh, yes, this is. This is why my barony tolerates me is because I provide, I provide good entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so history and diversity in history is kind of one of our jams as well. We, we really like, we like making connections, you know, and, and looking at things and seeing how they're similar and how they're different. And humanity is both appalling and amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, just studying that the prehistoric textiles across different continents is um, it's a little mind blowing how uh, how many uh, similar techniques there are all over the place. Yeah, but he's been a whole other rabbit hole. We won't go down right now. <laughs> oh, I understand. He's been threatening to grow some linen so yeah. we can we can attempt linen to. Uh, the problem is that I have 
super rudimentary spinning experience only with wool. Uh, my dye skills are obviously problematic. And, and the loom that we have in the garage, is, <laughs> uh, it's been in pieces from the time we got it. So I'm really, how, how do you plan to do this? Your excellency. <laughs> Yeah, just talk to Janice Elizabeth and uh, hang out with her for a weekend and you're good to go. Play yeah. on the project, the pieces will fall in place. Yep. Yeah, the, the problem, again, our attention spans, we either will hyper-focus and spend hours and hours and hours and days and years on something or, you know, we'll it's get halfway done and, and uh, I just... I, I know that we're not the only ones who have this problem. Well, but... pre-pandemic, I had been building a, uh, a, a tennis ball launcher. Um, crossbow. Yeah. And, you know, when everything shut down, I kind of lost motivation. But I, it, it, He found it in the garage last weekend yeah. when we were supposed to be at a symposium that he had, didn't remind me about. But, you know, if you can't take it to an event and use it on people, I mean, it's very hard to find the motivation. You could launch it for the dogs. Oh, true, our, but our they don't chase balls. Oh, okay. We could <gasps> we could launch it at the daughter. Oh, yes. <laughs> My oh. dog doesn't chase balls either. This this plan just came to fruition. <laughs> I'll bring my dog down. He loves to chase balls. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, our our girls are good girls, but they are not. They don't do toys very well. <laughs> yes. Uh, before things shut down again, I had been planning to have a sewing day out here and just mm -hmm. thinking, who can I get out here to help encourage my friends how to cut things out? Well, I, I'm wondering as things progress and the pandemic lingers on, if that is not really the future of the SDA is smaller, like getting back to our roots really, um, having yeah. smaller park gatherings, like not full blown events, like having a picnic in the park with, you know, fighting and sewing and I mean, whatever, or a demonstration. Mm -hmm. And that way you still are outreaching to the community and people can still come and you can distance. Um, or yeah. having, you know, a, a small gathering at your house to, to learn something. Um, I'm just like, I, I've been really sort of obsessing about how we make the SCA work in a better way um, for the rest of this pandemic. So I, I don't know if you have any ideas, but. Um... Well, actually that that structure was one that we had been discussing even, even before the pandemic, pandemic came along. Um, one thing that we've really seen or, or noticed is there's a definite division. Sorry, both of the dogs are here requiring scritches. So that's what you're hearing. <laughs> um, My allergies are contagious. Like I have a shaxi sneezing now. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I get shots in the arm so I cannot sneeze. But um, uh, we uh, there's, there's a definite division between people who the kingdom level is what they want. That is the level of play that they want. That is the level of play that they can afford. That is what really rings their bell. But there is 1000% also a, a demographic that doesn't want to go to big events. They want to have small or smaller intimate gatherings with like-minded people. Um, and so we had really, that was another thing that we had been hoping to do, to do more of um, pre-pandemic uh, was, was have smaller, you know, rent a grange, have smaller events where it was just getting together. And instead of everything being a competition, having it be the opportunity just to, to, to hang out with, with your friends, you know, talk about the, the, same, the same geeky things that make you excited and uh, collaborate on projects or yeah yeah and it's and i we feel like it's very important to have that base uh without that base the rest of it doesn't necessarily survive you well, have to have the small groups i'm not i'm not sure that that the way that we think about playing on a kingdom level is going to be viable anytime soon and i think we need to be creative and rethink how we support and a kingdom level play in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. 
I, it's, I mean, both Rifkin and I have kind of been kingdom level players for, you know, 20 plus years. And, um, I think that speaking for myself, I know that I've missed out on a lot of more local play. Um, and so the more I think about it, um, you know, doing small distance masked social events, um, really makes more sense. And, and the more uh, climate issues that we have and pandemic issues that we have, um, it, it's probably a good idea not to be traveling as much yeah. you know, for the planet, you know? And, and it, that's something that I've struggled with for a long time. And our kingdom is huge. It is. You know, <laughs> we're, we're holding a crown in three weeks that's, across a border and a really long drive. And it's not something that's going to be accessible for, and it can't be, cause it can't be a large event, right? Um, so it, it, it by its nature is gonna leave um, a lot of people out and it has to be, that's, that's, that's the way it has to be, but we need to shift so that um, our, our structure is such that, that they can have a crown there and we can have a crown here. I mean, you know, we need to figure out something better because this is not, anyway, I'm getting off topic. I'm no, sorry. We, yeah. we, we understand. Um, we, we have many conversations like this, but our, um, I mean, our focus as a landed, a, a pair of landed coronets is necessarily at the more local level. I, I know that it's very important that we also represent our group uh, at the principality and kingdom levels. Um, so, so sometimes I feel like my opinion might be a little biased because I really do, I, uh, hmm, without, ha, 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 the things that I can say and then be in trouble because like, this is a lot, did you know that we're being live streamed? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about something else. Um, well, no, I was just, I was just going to say though, that the, um, the local, yeah. The local level is very, very important, and the community is. Oh, what? What is? Oh, yes. Oh, you're glowing in the dirt. You are glowing. You have been no. at the or something? No, yeah, no. She got it from school, I think. No. Oh, uh, I went to the fair. Oh, she went to the fair with grandma. What? What? What fair? Anyway, I'm sorry. Go <laughs> back. fair. Oh. Um. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, you can have some cheese curds. Um, but yes, <laughs> this is our life. <laughs> um, but but yes, uh, the uh, again on the things that like so we the diversity and inclusion thing, and also community, like things that we feel are super important. It's we're a community, whether you it's know, the kingdom this or is local. A, a good time to bring up. Uh, we need to be more inclusive with our children as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, not necessarily all that was of also another major goal for mm, us yeah. going I mean, into <laughs> this position is to make it more welcome for the kids so and that that's that's been something i think we've all struggled with in the pandemic um oh yeah yeah I, our I current it's okay. for every rule there is a reason uh, but our rules when it comes to engaging kids during the pandemic are so restrictive that uh, we can only have one-way communication uh, through virtual means. You cannot have two-way. So, I mean, it's very important to keep our children safe, but it is also very uh, uh, hindering when it comes to engaging them in activities. Yeah, it's, so. it is tricky and, um, but they are important, not, not just for the future of the SCA, but also because the SCA offers, offers some really unique opportunities. Oh, yeah. um, our daughter, so all, all three of us arguably have ADHD um, and watching my daughter with some of her peers in the modern world is painful because it reminds me of me. Um, but, but those interactions are kind of fraught um, in a way that I don't see in the SCA because in the SCA, it's okay to be excessively geeky. 
Um, it's okay to get super excited like I have done multiple times and have my hands waving in the air, right? It's okay because, you know, these kids grow up seeing their parents do that. So when we come in as neurodivergent children and we display some of these, these things that in the modern world are so, you know, oh, you're so weird, you're so loud, don't you ever hold still? like these kids are used to it and yeah, it's it's no big, deal. It's no big okay. deal at all and so it's a really unique opportunity for them to not have to stress about what other people are going to think because honestly seriously like we're dressing up in clothes and hitting each other with sticks <laughs> like I did. so um yeah it's uh, you know that i think uh you know you always look for that moment that inspired you in the SCA, uh, where, where mine was like the, uh, the blacksmith, the sparks, the belly dancers, you know, that magic moment. But, you know, I would say that I had one of those moments where I took a group of uh, kids who were camping with us at, <laughs> at Ontier Westport and um, well, I cook, so I baked a bunch of cookies in our encampment, and uh, the children in Terrapamaria are the Assassin's Guild, and I had one of them write a note, and it was uh, from Thing Clovis in the Assassin's Guild of Terrapamaria, and I put it in the very bottom of this tray and <laughs> cookies on top of it. And we delivered it to Queen Alice of the West. <laughs> Who then shared it with and, all around her. Well, I, I gave her the tray and she said, oh, you're not going to make me take this tray. I'm like, yes, <laughs> you need to take this tray. And so she had her attendant carry this tray with her everywhere she went for that day at Ontario West. And when she got to the bottom, she pulled out the note <laughs> and read the note and said, I'm dead. I've been assassinated. You are all dead. <laughs> You're welcome on tier. <laughs> but yes, I will have to thank my friend Ula for helping arrange that. You can't drag Ula in with you. But watching the kids, every time we yeah. talk about this story in front of those kids, oh, yeah. their it faces, <laughs> they light up. We assassinated the Queen of the West. Yeah, it's it's the opportunity to engage with our kids like that is a lot of fun. And again, on, on the list of things that it's difficult for us to straddle as the SCA transitions between stages of life, a lot of us, uh, or a lot, yeah, a lot of us, the SCA was a very adult thing to do. And so having children around can be going to putting a damper on things, but but it was a special moment that they were a part of and you know yeah they, they, they've carried with that with them for the last few years and and, well, and they'll carry that with them for life that's just su such excellent um fun and involvement and like story time right. yeah yeah well and and again for a lot of us whose brains work differently the sca is a safe haven in so many ways and recognizing that a lot, a lot of our children are also special like us, you know, this gives them a safe haven to uh, to completely geek out on something. Oh, so many things, so many things. I, I love that. I haven't really thought about it that way before with kids, uh, but you're totally right. We really noticed it this summer. Actually, we had we had some people over, and I um, I'd watched our daughter's interactions with some of her peers. Her, her modern peers in the previous months. And there was just, there was a really marked difference in the interactions and the, um, the expectations that the other kids brought. So yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to have kids in the SCA. I'm, I've, as, as you know, like, I'm not gonna lie. It's super, super rough sometimes where you're trying to like our, our, our daughter likes to be involved. So you're sitting in court and you're, you know, I have had to stand up in court and and tell her to knock it off because she's you know, she's got a rope with a piece of like wood on the end and she's whipping it around and there are other children already you know and it can be it can be really stressful but 
at the same time, it's such a valuable learning experience. And uh, kids are fun. Kids are a lot of fun. They do crazy things. <laughs> we actually, um, for our baronial encampment, we have, is it three rules? No politics, don't be a jerk, and don't use the baby as a weapon. Uh, and that specifically came about because at Ontier West War, at one point we looked out and there was this rolling ball of children that was our, our baronial encampment children in the, in the grassy area in front of us. <laughs> and all of a sudden we realized I was, Imiv and our daughter had picked up the small toddler and was swinging her around. She had her arms under her armpits and was swinging her around so her feet were <laughs> keeping the other children at bay. And so... <laughs> Seriously, where else in your life are you going to be like, don't use the baby as a woman? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, anyway. <clears throat> we have many interests. We like lots of stuff. <laughs> we can, I, I specifically can talk a lot about all of them. <laughs> so, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. We we enjoy a diversity of backgrounds and ages and experiences, and it all contributes to the community that is Terra Primaria and on tier. So, <laughs> see how I did that? Just up. Very, very nicely done. <laughs> Back in. <laughs> Do you have any other questions that you wanted to ask? Oh, I think I asked most of them. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <have> just like. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any questions like, that you would no, like to no, ask them time to be done. <laughs> cut her off cut her off <laughs> this is when you wish you could message clovis and be like will you edit her excellency out please? not at all you know um <laughs> I've, I've taken a couple of your classes and your enthusiasm and your um cheerfulness and um energy energy is is one of the best things about it is that you're just like you're so engaged with the person teaching and excited and and it just really does sort of rub off on everyone else so I think it's awesome yeah I'm I'm very proud of his excellency he's done some really amazing stuff in the last year and a half talking about you I, I, I know it's you I, <laughs> I I can tell though that it's a it's a serious team effort. There's there's a definite definite compliment uh, between the two of you that um, is is really nice and comfortable. <laughs> I distract and he arranges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, her excellency was going to ask you if you had any any questions or anything else that you wanted to talk about tonight. I mean, you've watched all of their interviews. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Do you have a favorite event? Is Eagles your favorite event? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, it would have to be Bargamel's. Yeah. Uh, it, it's funny because uh, I resisted going to a, a Bargamel's for so long because it's a, a late spring event, like in April. And, you know, it's always raining in April. Who wants to go to a camp in April? But uh, um when I really started playing in Terra Primaria around 2000, uh, 2008, um, yeah, it quickly became like the best event. I mean, it is so family friendly, so low key. Um, it's, it's like the perfect, intimate, um, I mean, it, it, close knit event it's yeah. it's really lovely and 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 it the earliness always throws me too because i'm not ready yet <laughs> right right yeah. uh, i think some of our favorite events have have been smaller uh, baronial events just because you get the opportunity to talk to people that you wouldn't otherwise get to talk to yeah. um and uh, yeah i i i love bargamel's as well it's uh it is a, a, a great blend of all the things. And the food is usually fantastic. Because, well, try. Oh, <laughs> really? so we posted a video, a video of Vari cooking Vari's mushroom soup, my friend. Oh, that's oh, true. Oh, fresh soup is so good. I, I, I think both times I've been, I, I think I've only been to Bargamos twice, but she's been cooking 
And yeah. it's so wonderful to just have all the food there and taken care of. And it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's been one of the aspects of putting on an event in the next year or two that we've been kind of wrestling with because the whole, the whole concept of a communal kitchen, you know, it's kind of dicey for now. So yeah, yeah for Coronet, uh, I came home this evening and I was like, ah, oh, Clovis, we have to provide our own food. <laughs> By the way, summer, summer sausage and cheese and crackers. Probably. <laughs> These freezes really nicely. Um, you can make it in advance and then, uh, you know, keep it in a, a disposable pie plate and eat it out of the cooler. Oh, yeah. My camping tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I, I actually, when we first stepped up, put together like packing lists, um, like fairly elaborate packing lists. There's the, the overnight packing list and the day trip list. And then he may not specifically traveling list. And I totally forgot that I had them until our court coordinator was like, so have you, have you started your list for this weekend? <laughs> uh, but yeah, sorry. We're, I think our chairs are too close, our chairs are too close together. <laughs> <laughs> we like being together so much. And you can tell. Did well, I mention she's an introvert? I am. <laughs> But with well-placed commentary, so I think it's good. <laughs> he, he is pretty awesome. I like him. I like him. <laughs> yeah. Thank Sorry, you I, for yeah. doing this tonight. It's, uh, it's been really wonderful. Thank and you for inviting us. And the firelight is um, <laughs> extra. I love it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, it is an honor. I, I am serious. His Excellency watches all of your interviews, either as they are live streaming or as soon as they drop onto the YouTube channel. No, I still have a few to catch up on. Oh, do you? Really? Yeah. You could have fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is, it is an honor. And I, yes, we could continue talking all evening, but we won't. <laughs> so... But yes, thank you again. And thank you so much for what you guys have been doing. I, I really appreciate and I know that so many other people do it's not just his excellency. We've talked to a lot of people who really value the perspective that your interviews uh, give us on on aspects of the SCA that we don't always have access oh, yeah. to. So. <laughs> you guys are my heroes. Oh, thanks. I just I love hearing about people's passions and their and their their journey and it's just amazing and uh, getting to know people at, at a level that I probably never would have um, ever. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, as two in introverts who don't get to get that, you know, one on one time. Uh, this mm -hmm. is like a forced. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, I totally understand. I totally understand. Uh, I'm either super outgoing or, or I'm terrified to talk to people. So, oh, you add superpowers that his excellency has really quick is asking people to do things. I cannot do that. It kills me. And, and he'll be like, why don't you just ask? You know, people actually like to be asked because people like to have a purpose. Yeah. I know, I know, I know this intellectually. <laughs> I'm not good at asking for help for myself, but if I'm like putting together a team for something else, I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. You guys make a fabulous team. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, I, I feel very lucky that um, I have such an amazing sister. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> Her eyebrows just did the whoop, whoop thing. Ditto. <laughs> um, because Seriously, you guys I are from the summit and they're having cornet this weekend. I just want to give a shout out to everyone down there who is fighting this weekend or inspiring. And uh, just, I hope you guys all like uh, fight well and have a good time and be safe. And I hope somebody televises it. I would love to watch it. So I, I believe we are planning on live streaming. So. Yeah, there is supposed to be a live stream. Um, it is probably going to be dumping buckets. So. <laughs> It will be interesting, but yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's very exciting to, not that we don't love love our current prince and princess. It is always exciting to see 
uh, the next the next chapter in in the SCA story. You know, we get we get a new one usually every six months. So yeah, it's it's what keeps us vibrant. Yeah. yeah. Having that change is really important. Uh, so next week, uh, we are continuing our journey through the Baronies and uh, are going to be interviewing uh, the Baron and Baroness of Madrona. Spike and Enzio. Um, that's where I live. So I'm excited to talk to them. Um, they're very cool. And they've been doing some cool stuff too. And uh, they're just so approachable as well. So it should be um, a good time. Yeah, sure it will be. Spike is awesome. I haven't had that much opportunity to talk to Enzo, but uh, Spike taught a class for us. So, yeah, she's amazing. All right. Well, thank you again, Your Excellencies, and thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.